Okay, previously I told you that the right way to compare Buddhism and quantum physics was not to say that they have similar views of the world, but rather that they have similar ways to criticize the possibility to get a view of the world at all. So let me compare more precisely um, this way Buddhism and quantum physics have to criticize views of the world. You certainly all know that. But, you know, for instance, the Buddha said, it's just as if a man were wounded with an arrow. His friends would provide him with a surgeon, and the man would say, I won't have this arrow removed until I know whether the man who wounded me was a noble warrior, a priest, or a worker. But meanwhile, the man with an arrow would die. The idea of the Buddha by saying that is that when there is something like an emergency, something that you have to do immediately to relieve suffering, you should not indulge in speculations about what occurred, what will occur, and so on and so on. You just have to do what a surgeon would do, to do what a doctor would do, namely try to cure the person with a wound. Uh, you know that also that the Buddha, when asked uh, about the nature of the world, about whether the world has a beginning or is beginningless, whether the, the universe is finite or infinite, and so on and so on. The Buddha then answered with a silence, the so-called noble silence, because in fact for the Buddha this was irrelevant to the real problem of humankind. Whether the world is finite or infinite, limited or, or unlimited, the Buddha said. The problem of your liberation remains the same. So metaphysical pictures, metaphysical views of the world are completely irrelevant to the main target of Buddhism. Later on, with Madhyamaka, namely the middle way, this school of thought that was founded around the beginning of our era, especially by Nagarjuna, an Indian Buddhist sorry, philosopher of the second century of our era. Um, this doctrine, also, or rather critic of doctrine, tried to reduce ad absurdum all the views of the world, namely show that any view of the world that you propose can be easily contradicted with another view, by the same reason that asserts the first view. So any view, in this case, is dubious, because reason can justify either one view or the opposite with the same uh, easiness. The conclusion of uh, Nagarjuna is the so-called tetralemma. Everything is such, not such, both such and not such, and neither such and not such. That means that no combination of uh, thesis can really um, make sense of the world. And so we have to suspend the views. What was, in fact, the real aim of Nagarjuna? It was just to clear the way to get directly to the spiritual realization. He wanted to clear the way uh, of any view of the world you may have and just arrive with the freshness of the present moment. This ultimate truth of contemplative disciplines cannot be captured by a metaphysical picture. It cannot be expressed by words or by symbols, and therefore you have to stay very diffident without the, uh, with respect to these views. So you see how Buddhism is very uh, eager 
to suspend any metaphysical view of the world. So, in the next uh, slide, I will show you how quantum physics, especially by, seen by some very recent uh, uh, physicists, does exactly the same. For instance, in order to understand quantum physics, Anton Zeilinger, a celebrated f physicist um, from the University of Vienna, who very much uh, had uh, dialogued with, um, with uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, Anton Zeilinger said that quantum mechanics is a theory of the limits of available experimental information. Nothing more. Just experimental information. And just a theory of the limits of our access to experimental information. Nothing about you know, what the information is supposed to describe. What the information is about, namely the world on which we want to be informed. Nothing about that, just the information. No view of the world, just a description of how best to order the information we get from our experiments. Asha Peres was a physicist who very much criticized, uh, you know, all the attempts at drawing a metaphysical picture from quantum physics. And he said, it's the misuse of quantum concept guided by a pseudo-realistic philosophy that leads to paradoxical results. In other terms, what he meant is that the so-called paradoxes of quantum mechanics are not paradoxes of the theory, but paradoxes of the attempt to stick a view of the world that fits with this theory. If you don't try to uh, stick such view of the world, then the theory works perfectly well. It enables you to do wonderful things uh, in, in, techn in technological terms, and there is nothing mysterious about it. And uh, Asha Perez tried to uh, make sense of quantum theory without any picture. He said quantum theory is a set of rules allowing the computation of probabilities for the outcome of tests which follow specified preparations. So the true concepts of quantum mechanics are not concepts about the world, they are concepts about what people do in laboratories, namely the set preparations and they use measurement instruments to get outcomes. Nothing more, nothing else. And all the symbols of quantum mechanics can be explained this way. Namely, for instance, uh, the famous symbol Psi, which is usually called the wave function or the state vector, in fact, is just a tool to calculate probabilities to get outcomes of experiments. And then even the equation of quantum mechanics that is called the Schrodinger equation is not an equation that describes the becoming of things or, the, or their properties in a picture of the world. They are, this equation is just a tool to make a transition between the function psi at time zero and the function psi at time t. And then you use this function psi at time t to calculate new probabilities for new outcomes of new experiments. And that's it. Quantum mechanics is entirely encapsulated in this single picture. Nothing more and nothing else. No mystery, no paradox. But I'll come later to the paradoxes. So, in the next slide, I, um, I show you a new view, well, not a view precisely, a new conception of quantum theory that completely uh, skips the very need of having of a view of the world that fits with quantum physics. This is the view of uh, Christopher Fuchs, an American physicist who uh, teaches in Boston, and um, his uh, view, not view, but interpretation of quantum theory, is 
uh, called cubism. Like, well, the sound is, is similar to, you know, the painting of Picasso, cubism. But in fact, this is just the acronym of quantum Bayesianism. Bayesianism. You know, what is Bayesianism? Bayesianism is the doctrine of probability that was announced by, doc, but by Reverend Bayes in the 18th century. So, in fact, that means that quantum physics is nothing more and nothing else than, than a new theory of probabilities. A theory of probabilities of how to predict the results of experiments in a laboratory. Okay? So, for instance, uh, according to Christopher Fuchs, quantum mechanics is a user's manual for each of us. A user's manual. It's not a description of the world. No. It's a manual for the user of the world. For the one who wants to live in the world and make something in it and with it. Nothing more. Another sentence from the same Christopher Fuchs. A quantum state, he said, doesn't represent reality, but it represents an agent's probability assignment reflecting her degrees of belief about the future. So the famous psi function doesn't speak of the world, it speaks of our beliefs about the world. And our beliefs about the world are synthesized in our guesses. Our guesses are formalized by probabilities, by numbers between 0 and 1 that are called probabilities. This yields a very interesting philosophy of nature that was expressed by collaborators of Christopher Fuchs. For instance, uh, Rüdiger Schachs uh, said, there are no laws of nature, but we have evolved tools to navigate matter, na na nature, sorry, to survive in it. So that means that what quantum mechanics provides us is not a view of the world, a picture of the world, it's just a tool to navigate the world. Exactly like the Buddha said, you should not try to uh, ask about what, what happened before or after, before you do something, before you remove the arrow, you know. So here it's, I would say, the quantum mechanics here is a user's manual, a way to do something, okay, a teaching of how to do something in the world.